Hi, I'm Mick McQuaid, <clears throat> here to wrap up Chapter 1 of our textbook, R for Data Science, in the course ISTE 782 Visual Analytics. So you've been through six videos, one each on aesthetic mappings, facets, geometric objects, or geoms as we'll call them the rest of the term, statistical transformations, or stats as we'll call them, position adjustments, and coordinate systems. And these map the concepts that we care about to the things that we can see. An aesthetic is something visible. Visible things have position, shape, color, size, and several other properties named by Beltin. Actually, uh, the other properties, I think, are uh, texture, orientation, and value. So these are the aesthetic mappings. Aesthetic mappings make variables visible on the display, but another way to make a variable visible is to add faceting, either faceting on one variable using facet wrap, so that results in a number of small uh, plots, uh, one for each facet, or two variables using facet grid, and so that, as the name suggests, creates a grid. The geometric objects or geoms you've used um, and you've seen a list of them, over 30 of them, on the ggplot2 cheat sheet. And they're categorized there by the number of variables and whether the variables are discrete or continuous. You learn several statistical transformations or stats, including stat identity, stat count, stat smooth, and stat summary. And you learned that every geom has a default stat and that every stat has a default geom and that geoms and stats typically appear as pairs. Geoms in the same data visualization would occupy the same space unless their positions were adjusted. So you learned several position adjustments including identity, dodge, fill, and jitter. And you used mostly the Cartesian coordinate system, but you learned about these others. Chord fixed, chord flip, chord polar, and chord quick map. Now, of course, the first two are still Cartesian, but modified. And you can use chord polar to make pie charts and coxcomb plots, and chord quick map for geographic visualization. And the chapter concludes with a great example. Begin with the diamonds data set, compute counts for each, cut with the stat count, represent each observation with a bar, Map the fill of each bar to count, place the geoms in a Cartesian coordinate system, and map the y values to count and the x values to cut. And that's it. That's, that's all for chapter one. Um, I want to uh, thank you for your attention and to tell you that uh, we're going to skip over chapter two, but the rest of the, the course, almost all of the remaining lectures, are about uh, different chapters in our textbook. So thanks again for your attention, and uh, till next time.